I made a video not too long ago about making money with your photography and one of the topics that were in that video and one of the most commonly known topics is using stock photography. A lot of people may say that it's a saturated market now and there's no point of sending your photos in because no one's going to see them and no one's going to end up buying them. But if you're smart about it and if you prepare and do all the work that's needed, then there is potential for you to get some money out of it. But it takes a little bit of thinking and planning beforehand instead of just sending off all the photos that you think are good that you shot um, and uploading them and waiting for the big check to come in. So the next few videos I'm going to be making, including this one, are all about setting yourself up for the win of sending off your photos for stock photography websites. So if you aren't subscribed, feel free to subscribe if you want to stay along with this series because I'll be going through things like best practices, uh, editing your photos and sending your photos to a single website that can upload to a bunch of different stock photo sites all at once. So starting off, this video is all about the best practices uh, things that you should probably know beforehand before you go out and send off your photos. So the number one thing to keep in mind when you're doing stock photography is think about the buyer. Let's just say that there's this graphic designer looking to make a pamphlet about a travel organization that is featuring a big hotel in Maui, Hawaii. They have the option to go and take their own images when they're there, if they're ever traveling there get the hotel to take professional photos that they want to be used in that pamphlet, or they can go onto a stock photography website and find a photo that has been made by a professional photographer who just wanted to upload it to a stock photography website. So this will probably end up being cheaper, easier, and probably better quality than what they could do themselves. Now, if these photographers that were uploading these photos to this stock photography website were just thinking about themselves, they may not edit the photos in a way that the graphic designer may want. And because of that, the graphic designer may not want to choose those photos that they see, but because these photographers kept the end user or the buyer of these photos in mind, this graphic designer will probably like the photos that they see and want to buy them. So keeping the buyer in mind includes things like uh, the editing and the composition of the image, because a lot of times people may want to add graphics or text on top of these photos that they're buying. So you may want to add a little bit of empty space beside the subject of the photo, uh, just to let people add some text or whatever they want to add. Another tip to keep in mind is to go with quality over quantity. Now with the internet, it's easy to just upload all of your photos at once, but you probably won't be uploading a ton of good quality if you're uploading a ton of photos. Instead, what you want to do is look at each one individually and make sure that each of them are good quality. Sites like Shutterstock will automatically reject the photos that they think are bad quality with things like uh, artifacting and noise or highlights or lowlights that are blown out on either end. It's best to do this beforehand. Lightroom can help with showing the blown out whites and blacks by holding Alt or Option while you're moving around your black and white sliders. This will give you a overlay of the blown out areas of your photos so that you can keep that in mind while you're editing. Another reason to keep quality over quantity in mind is that if someone buys one of your photos and they really like it, they may want to go and check out your profile on that site, which will show all the other photos. Now, if you have a lot of photos that are uploaded with minimal quality, the buyer will probably just close that tab and move on and forget about you. But if your profile is full of high quality photos, even if it's not a ton of photos, that buyer may come back another time to find you specifically uh, because they remembered seeing all those really nice photos on your profile. Another tip which kind of goes along with quality is making sure that all of the technical parts of the image are at a good standard. So this goes all the way back to the taking the photo. You want to minimize the amount of noise you're getting so you can do things like lowering your ISO and compensating that with your aperture or your shutter speed or a flash or whatever. You also want to make sure that your image is fully in focus. If you're shooting at a very wide open aperture, you may want to try and experiment with some focus stacking. Um, 
taking multiple images with different focus distances and then merging those in post. That way you get more in focus if you're lacking a solid focal range. And also making sure that your image is sharp overall. So some lenses don't really shoot very sharp images. So you may want to look into using high quality lenses, but if not, using your softwares to enhance the sharpness in post will help as well. You also wanna make sure that your subject is being shown very cleanly and very obviously. This is what will inevitably sell the buyer to buy the photo. So you wanna make sure that the subject is easy to see. There's nothing that's uh, blocking the camera from parts of the subject. One example like this is if I was to take a photo of someone doing mobile photography. If I was the subject in this photo, I wouldn't want to have my phone directly covering my face because my face is also part of the subject. So I might wanna compose my shot like this or like this, where you can still see that the subject is taking a photo with their phone, but part of the subject, which is my face, isn't being blocked. Now, sometimes that's not the biggest deal. Sometimes that actually may be what you think that the final product may look like, but this is just one example. Another way to keep your subject looking clean in the shot would be to make sure that there's no distracting elements in the background or in the foreground. This can be done while you're taking the photo. This can also be done in things like Photoshop in post. Editing out small details that can potentially draw the eyes away from the subject can often go a long way. Things like this might include little rocks on a piece of pavement or some street lights on a road. Small little things like that can sometimes distract the viewer. So cleaning those up and making the shot a little bit cleaner can also go a long way. Another thing to keep in mind while you're doing these photos is to make sure to have a little bit of a variety. Not everyone that's gonna be buying these images are looking for a 16 by nine landscape photo. Some may be looking for a portrait photo. Some may be looking for one by one. And some people might also be looking for different angles of the thing that you're shooting at. So maybe instead of just taking one image of every subject that you have, maybe try different angles, try your moving your camera 90 degrees, um, experiment with that and try different things to find some different angles because some people might also be willing to buy a series of the photos that you make about one subject instead of just the one that you're thinking of submitting. Now, this also goes back to one of my earlier points. Make sure that they're also all good quality photos that you're uploading. So while quality over quantity is important, sometimes variety and a little bit of extra quantity can also improve some of your uh, offerings. Another thing to keep in mind while you're looking around for doing stock photography is to look around. Do your homework and see what other people are selling because while being unique and having your own creative look on your photos is important. Sometimes straying too far away from the trends will also mean that you're probably not gonna get many sales. Now, keep in mind if your photos are really good and you just hit the jackpot on some of the obscure topics that you're shooting, that might also work for you as well. But you can also take a look around and see some of the trending photos that are being sold. Seeing what works for other people can also help you gauge what might work for you in the long run. Another thing to do your homework with is copyrights and licenses and all that stuff. I imagine different stock photography websites have their own rules. I'm sure a lot of them probably go along with what each other say, but some might have their own individual rules that they run by. So make sure to follow all of them if you're planning on uploading all of your photos to multiple sites. Some of these rules include things like taking photos of certain brands or showing logos in your shots, uh, shooting copyrighted locations like certain buildings, shooting people's faces is a big deal and sometimes even just shooting people in your shot in general. Some sites are a little bit more lenient, some are less lenient, but most of the time if you're shooting someone's face, you need to submit or at least have the license agreement that that person signed, letting you take that photo and upload it to wherever you're uploading it to. Sometimes you might be able to appeal those photos and get them uploaded anyways. Sometimes you might just have to bite the bullet and try and sell that on a different site. 
Another tip would be to take your time with the editing. Sometimes you might be used to just throwing presets on your photos and exporting them. If you're gonna be selling these photos, I would say feel free to do some pixel peeping. Take your time with these edits. Uh, feel free to jump between Lightroom and Photoshop, whatever you need to do to make this photo look good. I also would recommend don't go too crazy on the creative side of the edit. Going with a little bit more of a natural look will probably sell a little bit more than going with the, like a teal and blue kind of preset look. You may find different results than that, but I think if someone's gonna be looking for vacation photos, I think they'll probably look towards a photo that looks like a natural beach instead of a teal and orange beach. I'll be covering the edit portion of stock photography in an upcoming video, but that's just one tip here for now. And then one final tip for stock photography would be to be yourself. Ultimately, this is your work. This is your portfolio and your profile that you're gonna be building. So while you do want to cater to the buyer, you also wanna make sure you're true to yourself. If your creative integrity is a big deal to you, then feel free to keep doing what you're doing and don't stray from that. Because what you do, even if it goes against some of the tips that I have here, it still may ultimately give you success if you're doing what you're doing in a way that people wanna see. And there is a way that you can blend your uniqueness with the trends that are out there. And you can make it so that your unique work pushes past the flood of all of the same photos that are out there that are always being uploaded. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you back next time for the next stock photography video next week. If you liked this video, drop a like, and if you loved it, drop a subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.